I was tired of, of 1,000, 5,000, 20,000. Everybody was born naked. Every I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. But I'm afraid of a pack of sheep led by lions. I came here to raise lions. I came here to provoke you. I came here to disrupt you. I came here to set that fire inside you. No matter the recession in the forest, a lion will never eat grass. Monkey no the bongo. No. A lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the fattest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the fastest animal in the jungle. So if you ask the lion, did you pass your fastest animal exam? He will say no. Did you pass the longest animal in the jungle? He will say no. Did you pass the biggest animal in the jungle exam? He will say no. Did you pass the wisest animal in the jungle? So what did you get in, in fastest? F. What did you get in strongest? F. What did you get in this one? F. What did you get in this one? F. So in your school set exam, you get F, 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 F. No problem. But yet he's the king of the jungle. Your academics is not a guarantee for your success. Keep your first class one side. Keep your two one one side. Keep your two two one side. Show me your attitude. A lion will look at an elephant. He said, I will eat this. Because that is how he thinks. An elephant will see it and run away. It is not a function of your size. It is a function of your attitude. Walk to that person and say, you need to be in this platform. Otherwise, you'll look for me tomorrow. Start talking to them now. Stop pitching them. Hand is ticking. Tick tock. Tick tock. Where are my lions? Can I hear you say, Ahu? So at this point in time, it is important that you know that decisions make men. What decision do you want to take today? What decision do you want to happen in your life? What decision do you want to see in five years' time? Everybody overestimates what you can accomplish in one year, but you underestimate what you can accomplish in five years. Stop thinking short term. Think about the long term. Money follows attention. You are too quiet for success. Once you make noise, you command attention. <laughs> hey. We don't show, we don't show. Everybody was born naked. Everybody. There is nobody I know that came out with shoes. iPad, Blackberry, nobody. Everybody came out naked. The only thing a baby comes out to is the fear of falling down and the fear of a loud noise. Every other thing you learned, you learned to be poor. So if they're going to be successful, you have to unlearn poverty and learn success. Unlearn poverty and learn success. I was tired of, of 1,000, 5,000, 20,000. I was tired. My brother, small money is bad. So I wrote on my wall 100 million. I wrote it on the wall, big with paper. I will lie down by my bed on the floor. When I wake up, it's 100 million. I see. I wrote it on my ceiling, 100 million. When I turn like this, 100 million. Turn like this, 100 million. In my bedroom. Turn like this, 100 million. My toilet, when I'm sitting on the throne, 100 million. This book will not pass me by. Whatever you look on, once there is a will, there will always be a will. I put a target on my mind, 100 million, and I put a time, one year, one year. When you put a target and a time, direction will appear. What is your target? What time do you have? When you put a time and a target, you turn to a madman.
The world does not, does not excuse the road for, for human beings. It's when you are mad, the road will clear. Stop thinking about 500,000. When you have a time and a target, everything changes. Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, my mentor, my boss, says in Africa, when a gazelle wakes up, it has to run faster than the fastest lion, otherwise it will be eaten. It says also in that same Africa, when a lion wakes up, it has to run faster than the fastest and, um, um, gazelle, otherwise it will, it will, I mean, faster than the fastest gazelle, otherwise it will not eat. The moral of the story is whether you are a gazelle or a lion, when you wake up, love all you want. I am too busy building an empire. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. Ahoo! Ahoo! God bless you. I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. But I'm afraid of a pack of sheep led by lions. I came here to raise lions. I came here to provoke you. I came here to disrupt you. I came here to set that fire inside you. No matter the recession in the forest, a lion will never eat grass. Monkey no the bongo. No. A lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the fattest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the fastest animal in the jungle. So if you ask the lion, did you pass your fastest animal exam? He will say no. Did you pass the longest animal in the jungle? He said no. Did you pass the biggest animal in, in the jungle exam? He will say no. Did you pass the wisest animal in the jungle? So what did you get in, in fastest? F. What did you get in strongest? F. What did you get in this one? F. What did you get in this one? F. So in your school set exam, you get F, 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 F. No problem. But yet he's the king of the jungle. Your academics is not a guarantee for your success. Vida Ichitabu. Vida is a certified wealth manager and financial services expert to high net worth private clients. Her professional career in the financial services ecosystem has spanned about 17 years, the majority of which was excellently harnessed within the Stambic IBTC group. In 2007, she became a private and investment banker providing niche services to affluent clientele. In a short while, she flawlessly executed the responsibility of setting up and ensuring the smooth operation of the third private banking suit. In 2008, Vida transitioned in the Wealth Group and established the Relationship Management Unit of the Pension Entity. She then served as a Strategic Relationship Manager till 2014 established and harnessed B2B relationships across SMEs, conglomerates, federal and Lagos state sectors, respectively. Vida upskilled into the investment management for a three-month capacity building program in 2013. She excelled at the program and was responsible for the successful negotiation and realignment of the investment strategy for two privately managed funds of an international conglomerate. In 2014, she joined the private client service and obtained her certification as a wealth manager by the International Academy of Business and Financial Management, IABFMI, in 2016. She assumed the role of the head of the private client services in 2018 
and led the team at a nation scale. She was the pioneer project owner and co-writer of the Stambic IBTC Pension Quarterly HNI newsletter with multiple HNI commendations. In 2020, Vida delved back to the B2B arena, becoming a regional manager along with her wealth manager status and successfully led the largest team of business development managers. She held this role till she exited to establish 4th Avenue Limited in 2022. 4th Avenue is a registered business consulting LLC. It is founded on over a decade and a half of immense financial services experience and expertise in high net worth wealth management, business development, strategy and communication, respectively. In giving credence to career legacy and competences, our ABC solutions have served clients across the oil and gas, FMCG, financial services, technology, logistics, telecommunications, education, as well as public sector. Vida is a familiar figure in the communication arena with multiple appearances on channels television as a subject matter expert, classic 97.3 FM as a wealth expert discourser, compare at Echo Atlantic Group, the National Economic Dialogue hosted by NECA, keynote speaker at U-Turn Africa Conference and several other virtual communities. Vida runs a vibrant YouTube channel called Signposts with Vida, sharing thought-provoking and action-triggering conversations. A very beautiful evening, everyone. Good evening from the side of the world, which is Africa, Nigeria. And I'm so excited. I'm so happy to be here hosting and anchoring this amazing maiden event of the International Women's Day celebration. And I'm so, so excited that we are all here and I can see our comments coming in from Nigeria, Oladikupo, I can see everyone joining us. Do well to invite your friends. My name is Dikachi Colin, and I am the anchor for tonight's Hangout. If you're excited, then I'm excited. And I can tell you one thing, it is one thing to be in this particular live session, and it's another thing to take something home. So if you are ready, can you drop your comments? Can you drop your comments, drop your comments? Just introduce yourself with an emoji. Introduce yourself with an emoji. I can see Oladipupo Yanu. I can see Chiwala from Lusaka, Zambia. I can see everyone. Mrs. Debbie, Victoria. I can see you also. Drop an emoji. Yes, Mr. Ball, I can see you already. I can see you. I can see you. Yes, 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 yes. So if you're excited as a yam, do well to drop an emoji in the comments. Drop an emoji in the comments. And we are about to get started. One thing I must tell you is that tonight is not going to be like every other night. Because the value that we'll be receiving from this place is way more than you might have received formally. So once again, I'm Dika Chipolin and I am your anchor for tonight's virtual hangout. And today, you know, there is something about the Ubon King Foundation um, that really inspires the inclusion of women. And we know that today in um, this year's International Women's Day celebration, the theme is inclusion inspiring inclusion and this is one goal that our mentor dr ubong thompson king once pioneered and he's one person who championed the affairs even in women i remember most of his um some of his outings and where he was talking about women you know taking charge being able to manage their finances being able to pull things through. So that is why we are here. So if you're excited, then I am excited. I can see so many of us 
joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Do all to share the link to your friends, to your family members, to everyone around you, to everyone around you. Tell them we are ready. I can see the... I can see them. I can see you all. Yes, 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 yes. Wayne, you're ready. Chiwala, you're ready. Oladi Kupo, and I'm so excited to be the anchor for tonight. So we will be going straight into what we have. So let's just do a little icebreaker here. So one thing is I want us to do something quickly. I want five persons. Introduce yourself with an emoji. Or tell us about your day with an emoji. Introduce yourself with an emoji. I want to see. I want to see the comments coming in. I want to see the comments coming in. Was your day so amazing? Was it fireful? Was it stressful? Show us in the emoji. Show us in the comment section, and let's get going because it's going to be an amazing session tonight. It's going to be an amazing session tonight. So if you are here and you are ready, I am also here and I'm ready 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 our speaker is already with us our speaker is already with us and if you can hear me do well too yes akt i can see you oh i can see your emoji already <laughs> okay i hope i hope your day went well so just before i call on our amazing speaker yes just before i call on her I want to tell us something because it is a beautiful thing that we are celebrating the international women. Some people will say, ah, has it not been celebrated already? Of course, this is the month of March. You can still keep celebrating the women. And so we are so excited to be here once again. So this is a time where I get to introduce the speaker. So first of all, I want to ask us to do something. She will be speaking in few minutes but i want you to reshape your mind focus on this because it's going to be a life transforming session it's going to be a session where your eyes will be open even as a woman i hear so many people saying oh what's what's with it with women women aren't supposed to be talking about finances women aren't supposed to be talking about how to invest how to manage how to do this how to do that hello oscar from uganda so glad to have you here. And so it is a beautiful thing that we are having this conversation today. It's a beautiful thing that we are having this conversation today. So without taking so much of our time and without much ado, I would like to welcome the amazing, amazing Vida Echetabu. She has, we have already heard about her her um, profile and everything. I can tell you one thing. It is nothing that you have heard before. We're so glad to have you in our miss, Mrs. Vida. I'm so excited. I popped up just like everyone in the comment section that we are going to have a mind-blowing session. A big welcome to you, Mrs. Vida. Please take the stage. Okay, Mrs. Vida, we, we can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself, please? Okay, hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect, okay. perfect. Thank you. Um, is it okay if I call you Pauline or is it Dikachi? Which do you prefer? You can call me anyone as the spirit okay. leads. <laughs> All right. Okay, and so um, now that I've taken that liberty, I will please ask you to just address me as Vida. That would be fine. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for. Um, um, I want to extend my sincere appreciation to Mrs. Uime Ivy King, as well as the Ubon King Foundation, for the honor and the privilege to um, participate in this session. And so um, I am. I am good to go. I am pumped. I am excited. I am seeing comments in the in the room and I'm like, okay, let's, let's do this. So um, thank you once again. I, I hold this in sincere and deep appreciation. Okay, so can I now, let me take permission from the audience. Can we now progress? 
waiting to see the chat, the chat room. Can, can we progress? Should we start? Where are the people are? I need comments. I need comments to know whether I should go forward or I should maintain position. Should we start? Where are the yeses? Are the yeses taking it or are the noes taking it? Okay. <laughs> All righty. Okay. So the conversation today is about building wealth and also having a wealthy mindset. Thank you so much. And I'm going to keep this conversation um, as light and as practical as possible. You know, when we hear the word wealth, it almost sounds like something distant, something, you know, out of reach, but it isn't because it's, um, it's as near as you make it out to be. And by this, I mean, if you have been in catering, for instance, your ability to bake a cake it's your own wealth in that context. If you have been a mechanic before, your ability to, um, I think there's some feedback, some, some, some feedback in the background. Is that okay if they mute? You can still proceed, please. Okay, all right, great. So I think that, you know, when you look at wealth, if you think of it as something that is possible, something attainable, it, is, it will be possible and it will be attainable. Now, though the conversation, the topic says building wealth and a wealthy mindset, I'm going to talk about it, flipping it over from the perspective of you can only build wealth if you have a wealthy mindset. You really can only do that. You can only give what you have. So if your mindset is not wealthy, um, how would you build wealth? If your hands are not oily, how do you give oil? Do, are, are we going together? So it's critical that we are able to now look at it and say, what is it about my mindset that I need to fix? Now, let me, let me give a little bit of um, a background. I started my career in 2006 and nothing I did to earn it. At, th at that point, favor found me. And I found myself in the private banking unit of Stambic IBTC. Um, that unit was a unit that attended to the richest, most influential clients of the bank. And then it was IBTC chartered, you know. And so I found myself there. And I agree that, um, what's the word now? I had a bit of a privileged background you know, to be modest. But at the same time, when I was put in that unit, it exposed me to money in accounts that I had not been exposed to as an adult ever or in a very long time. It puts me in the space of where there were people who had so many zeros behind their, you know, on the in the bank accounts, and I was like, "Wow." I was nervous initially because I was booking investments. I was handling some treasury operations, so I would book some investments in in dollars, in naira, in pounds, you know, and all. And so, I now was able to see these people and relate to these people that had these monies. And it wasn't long because, I mean, I like good things. If you like good things, so please 
join join the club but if you don't you know you can just cross to the other side in fact if you don't i don't know why you should be here anyways before long i was used to you know seeing clients that had big big money 50 million 100 million 70 million and this was in 2006 10 million in fact i remember one day particularly that a client had in his balance 3 million in 2007 that was not small money oh. when i think about it that was a lot of money 3 million back then what would it be now self maybe 10 million 12 million in terms of value you know and i looked at that man's account and i said hey yeah this man is broke can you imagine that? I was also a graduate entry, you know, I was a very junior somebody. So I didn't even, as at the time that I was saying somebody that had 3 million in his bank balance, not his investment, so bank balance. I was saying that, hey, yeah, the man is broke. That's what I was thinking in my heart. I, Vida Echetabo, as at that time, had not had in my entire account put together 1 million. And I saw somebody whose bank balance was 3 million, exclusive of his investments. And I was saying he was broke. Do you know what had happened to me? My mindset had shifted. I was now used to affluence. I wasn't used to single digit millions anymore. I was used to seeing millions above 10 million, you know, 50 million, 30 million. I was used to massive values. And you see, what you are used to will come to you. What you focus on is what will happen. Now, the opposite of a wealthy mindset is a scarcity mindset. Which is why we can we see it all the time. The rich help themselves. How many of us are used have heard that the rich help themselves? If you have ever, um, I think was it two years or three years ago, Davido was celebrating his birthday, and just like play like joke, people were just dashing him money. How many of us remember that? Please put it in the comment. Davido's birthday, somebody would just say, Ah, Baba, five million. 3 million, 1 million, and it was like a joke. The rich help themselves. Whereas, guess what? The poor don't help themselves. It's a very unfortunate thing, but the poor do not help themselves. Rather, the poor will plot how to do, outsmart the other person. Because where the wealthy people are, they know that there is abundance beyond where they are. That they may be in this particular place, but they know that there is resource about and abounding everywhere. They know it. They can tell. That is why one rich man will sit down somewhere and place a call and say, I'm sending somebody to you. And say, oh, consider it done. Whereas the people who are meant to be helping themselves break out of the, the stronghold of lack will be the ones hiding opportunities. And you know, you know, you know, they give you half information so that you too can go and suffer the way they suffered. Now, if you spend a lot of your energy trying to outsmart, outweight, um, have a fast one on, on the other, you won't even have time to explore possibilities. So you see, the people you surround yourself with is critical on this wealth journey. Remember I said that because I was put in that in that unit where the average value I was investing was 
20, 25, 50 million, 100 million, 70 million, 200 million. My mind shifted. I could only really function in places where the money was big immediately. And it trailed me through my career. Now, when you have a wealthy mindset, um, how do I put this now? Let me give an illustration. Let me give another example of an experience I had. Now, the minute I became a private banker, the change started happening because I was now exposed to people who were dealing even values bigger than I was dealing. And then one day at the time, I used to manage my MD's bank account. And then I, I noticed uh, this account is having a lot of transactions. I'm not used to seeing debit alerts. Again, because of who I, where I was and the environment, I was used to getting credits. I was used to money coming in, not money going out. I was used to getting values and they say they want to do this, they want to do this with the money. I wasn't used to seeing a string of debits, debits, debits. Where is my money going? Remember, I'm just the manager. It's not my bank balance. But you see, I had this sense of it is my money. So we have to be comfortable with money. You have to be comfortable with wealth. And the only way to be comfortable at something is to rehearse and make sure that it sits with you. And so back to the story, I marched into my MD's office. See, in that moment, it didn't occur to me that I was a staff and they can fire me. Why would they fire me? Was my mind. I came to ask you questions. Where's my money going? What are you doing with your account? What's going on here? And I marched into his office and I said to him, um, Anap, that's his initials. We used to call him Anap. I said, Anap, um, what's going on? There's a lot of activity on your account. I'm seeing more debit alerts than I'm used to. Um, so he said, oh, no, nothing at all. That He had promised some people some money and he was just making good on his audience, you know, and um, making good on his promise, rather. And I said, um, I questioned him and said, are you are sure you are not in trouble? You are sure that all is well because this is an anomaly for me. I was questioning the owner of the money, the MD of my company about his money as if it belonged to me. And he looked up and said, Davida, I promise you I am fine. The way you are going, if I was in trouble, I would run to you first. I will quickly come and tell you. So I just need to know because I don't like anything messing with my money. Now, you see, from that story, I have shown you that I had gotten comfortable with money. I had gotten comfortable with wealth. I had gotten comfortable with affluence. Now, for you where you are, what is the highest value that you are comfortable with? Are you around people that when they speak, all they are talking about is Nigeria has happened to, hey, my God, I cannot afford this anymore. Oh my God, this. You have to be very intentional though, because if you are upskilling yourself here in this conversation, and your critical circle are not being upskilled, and they are all still lamenting about um, dollar. Meanwhile, half the people that are screaming dollars, dollar price and all that, they have no interference with dollar. They don't, on a good day, they don't even have a dumb account, but they are the ones who are shouting dollar, dollar, dollar the most. Am I going too fast? Am I going too fast? Can I get um, some feedback? Am I going too fast? Am I good? So now 
I'm just going to go right ahead and I'm going to trust that you guys are good with my pace. You need, you need, it is critical to tell yourself there is money. It may not just be flowing around you or to you, but there is money. There is wealth. Again, I like to draw things, you know, and paint pictures. Now, while I grew up with some affluence, when my father retired, we also went through significant lack. And it wasn't because he didn't plan or they didn't plan, but because some family challenges showed up and it really depleted the resources. And so for very many years, I had had no reason to go to the international airport. I had no reason. Life was life in us at the time. So I just knew that people were traveling and coming, but I was hearing a lot of, all around me, I was always hearing people say, there's no money. In Igbo, they'll say, Ego Adiro. You know, you just be hearing that lack, that lack thing going on around, going on around for a very long time. So um, I grew up, I went to primary school, I went to boarding school with that whole, there's no money, manage this one, that one. Then I don't know what happened. I can't remember who was traveling abroad. I really honestly can't remember. It might have been an aunt. It might have been somebody. I don't know. But that day, I went, I accompanied my dad to the airport to drop them off. And we got to international. And everywhere was full. I saw cute children traveling abroad. I saw people, my age mates, going on vacation with their family. I, I mean, I just, that was when I said to myself, there's no money, there's no money. But all these people are going abroad. And remember, this was far back home. It's not now that Jackpot, that everybody, people come from the back end of um, Okanafort and go straight to the airport. No, this was in the early 90s or so. Something shifted in me, either early 90s or mid 90s, something shifted in me. And I said to myself, these people, where are all these people going? How did they get the money? If, because all I had heard for a long time, because circumstances had changed, was there's no money, manage this. We don't have enough money. Uh, so, did, you know, if we're going to cook one fantastic pot of soup with 20K, you know, things were tough. So we were cooking with 7K. And I was, I had been so locked up in an environment where luck was staring me every day in the face. Again, remember that I had a privileged background. So I was used to traveling at the airports. I was used to international flights, flying first class, business class. I was used to diplomatic vehicles picking us up when we land the other side of, of, of our trips. And then I went from that used to as a kid and grew up through adolescence in luck till I went to that airport. And I said to myself after then, there is money, there is money. All these people that are traveling, even babies and children are traveling, ah, huh? something shifted. You must expose yourself to places and people that will shift that mental block. You must. I am an advocate of pruning, pruning, and pruning relationships. I have, I have no scruples dissociating. None. I don't believe that friendships are for lifetime. 
if it so happens that me and you are progressing together and you are making progress and making progress and we're fanning each other up and we're moving together, fantastic. But I'm not one of those people that will say, oh, they have been my friend for such a long time. Hey, how will it be? Ah, it will be. Oh. It will be. It must be. I, I drop, I, I drop, see, unceremoniously, I just stop hanging around you. I just stop talking to you. I get busy. We keep saying two heads are better than one. It, there's context to that two heads are better than one. Two heads are better than one when there are two rightly matched people, focused and driven, not competing, moving forward. But you see, if you're in the company of somebody who is not interested in getting up and going, ah, one good head is better. You and the Lord, you and the Holy Spirit, you alone and books, you alone and your imagination of possibilities. Are we good? Now, when you are with the right people, see, poverty has an energy. And please, when I speak like this, it is not because I have arrived at the threshold of, I'm clearly not Otedola. I am clearly not Dangote. I'm clearly not Abacha or Abacha's family or Babangida's lineage. I'm clearly none of those. And it's not even a yet matter because I will never be an Otedola, a Dangote and all that. I will be a Vida in my own capacity of wealth. Now, there's a quote I had put out some time ago. And I'm, try I'm trying to touch on a few things as much as possible. So that, um, because this conversation is literally endless. It is literally endless. I put out a quote that says, investment is the offspring of savings. Wealth is their descendant. I'm going to say this again. Investment is the offspring of savings. Wealth is their descendant. So it means that if you are not saving, how are you going to make investments? If you don't make investments, how will you get wealthy? How? Now, for the sake of drawing this home, can I assume that 70% of the people here are in paid employment? Can I assume that 70% of the audience are in paid employment and that is a very modest assumption now i have asked this particular question in the oil and gas in public sector in private sector in manufacturing in different settings and the result is typically the same Assume that you're working and your salary is, let's say, one million. Hmm? And we have all been screaming that this one million is not even enough. We are agitating. We want promotion. We want salary increase. We want all sorts of things. Hmm? Good. We are technically barely making ends meet. And then... 
all of a sudden, with the current economic, you know, volatilities, and this volatility is both in Nigeria and abroad. Though. So don't think that the people are abroad because they take pictures with snow cones and the, the streets is clean means that life is better out there. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that. This economic situation, it's cutting across. It's just that some nations, because they, they are physical and macro, micro um, economic policies and structures um, are better applied they're able to cope and shoulder if a number of things better than other nations that don't have that structure. Anyways, back to the second, back, back to the question. Your company wakes up one day, first of all, as an aside, because you know, we're Nigerian, say, God forbid, God forbid, blood of Jesus. It is just an example, but I need to make this point. If your employer wakes up tomorrow and says, things are really tough. We can't afford to pay you your 1 million anymore. We are now going to have to pay you 700,000. We really apologize and all. How many people in the chat room, please? How many people will resign the following day or that same day and say, I can't take this. I am worth more than this. I, I, I cannot, I, nobody can touch my salary. I can't take it. How many people will say that and resign because their salary was cut? <clears throat> In the chat room, say, you won't resign or I will resign. Let me see it in the chat room, please. Where are my people? <clears throat> yes, I agree. Oh, God forbid, not your portion. But if for the sake of this example, how many people will resign if their salaries were cut? Yes, I will resign. No, I won't resign. It is a tough one. True. I agree. Tough one. Thank you very much. I want to thank you, Ekemini. I won't resign. That is true. Who else? Thank you, Minister Jennifer. No, you won't. Anybody else? Mary says, I might, meaning that she won't actually. That if she was going to do it, she'll put there, I will resign, meaning she won't actually. Tolu says I won't. Now, I'm going to progress here. Okay. And Chiwala says, yes, they will resign. Good. But guess what? In all the sessions I had, there was often one random person that would say, yes, I will resign. But most people and most of the audiences, nobody said they would resign. And that statistics is correct. Now, <clears throat> the reason why most people won't resign is because, one, they know that they need something. They need to earn something. But that's not even my logic. Now, go with me here. Because guess what? The children will still go to school, right? Right. You're not going to live under a tree. No, you won't. Your car will still get serviced. Yes, it will. You will still eat lunch. You'll still eat food. Yes, you will. The things that need to be done will still be done with less money. I am telling you this as a, it is as sure as literally the oxygen you are breathing. Everything you need to do will still happen with less money. In fact, guess what will happen? Everybody will start working even harder because we know that the logical progression of things is after they have cut salaries, if things don't recover in the company, they will let some people go. Nobody ever wants to be on the list of people that are let go. 
So to make sure that you are not let go, everybody will start working extra hard to keep that job till something better shows up. That is what will happen. That is exactly what will happen. Now, my question and where I am actually going with this is, if you can live on 70% of your income till something better comes up, why won't you cut your own salary for yourself and save that 30%? Think about it. If your employer cuts your salary, you are not going to carry placard. You are not going to resign. You will adjust and you will cope. You will tell yourself better days are coming. This is a season. This is the fight. This is that. And you have been shouting, you don't even have enough savings. You don't even have enough money to save. You don't even have... But your employer cut your salary and you aligned, you say working better, harder, smarter. Why not cut that salary for yourself and take it as a savings and put away and tell yourself that your employer cuts your salary? Tell yourself that. Because guess what? The journey for wealth, though, it's this literally permanently uncomfortable it's uncomfortable you can't be comfortable in your comfort zone and be expecting to make quantum leap progress in wealth in savings in investments no you can't one must pay the price one must pay the price. You have to determine for yourself. Which hard do you want? The hard of, let me deprive myself now and start that journey bit by bit. Or the hard of the future when people who started early are on a measure of auto cruise, and then you are starting it in old age. Because guess what? God can compress time for us. He can restore the years the canker worm at. But there are certain things we pray in life that do you want to be getting your Range Rover at age 75 because God compressed time for you then. When, when, what is the sweetness of driving a Range Rover as your first car? You finally broke through at 75. When all your youth, you were hopping or kada, dodging one chance and um, jumping mode where for those of us that knew about Moldwe, when you can catch it early. You see the thing about wealth, and it can come to anybody at any age. But we want to travel and see the world. Do you realize that the older you get, you become a risk when you are traveling? Because if you are not even agile and fit, you can't travel unaccompanied. How many of us want to go bungee jumping? You want to go on cruise? You want to do all sorts of things? If you're making serious money that can afford you to eat ice cream like you like in old age, there are certain things that are not good for old age anymore. So in order to somewhat wrap this up, and this conversation is something that I can go on and on and on about. However, you must, there are prices to pay for wealth. If you're not saving, 
the opportunities that you will never even hear about for investment because you don't even have the resources in your pocket. There are some things that you, you suddenly find out about it and you say, ah, how come nobody told you since? It's only because at that point in time, you have the resources or you have the capacity, you know, to pull in the, the amount of money to make those investments. That's why you are now hearing about it. You're now in that space where things are passing and it's touching you because you are beginning to be in the place where you have the, comp the capacity to participate in such opportunities. But for somebody who has not eaten, and they're talking about, um, man, there's this commercial paper that you can, you know, you can just, you know, take advantage of and all that. And they are calling um, big, 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 big values. Minimum entry is 5 million, 10 million, even 1 million. And you have not had lunch. Can you hear it? You can't. Even if they're holding loudspeaker around you, you can't hear it. Even if you hear it, it won't register. There are different types of investments. But you see, again, poverty of the mind is worse than poverty of the pocket. Which brings us back to, it is poverty of the mind that makes poor people compete with each other. Instead of them saying, I have this 5,000. You, you have this 5,000. There's this office that I go to and they are always hungry there. Auntie, you can cook very well. Can we put this thing together and see how we can be selling there and make some money? No. We don't like such things as poor people. Because all of a sudden, what is meant to be a simple in and out transaction, two poor people, one person will start thinking that ah, this person is making more money. There must be something they are getting behind. There must, and then the witching, winching, winchy, winchy starts happening. And then they fight themselves. Let me ask you something that you can relate to. Do you remember last year in February, there was serious um, cash scarcity, you know, before elections now, there was scarcity all about the whole place. And banks did not have cash. CBN said they were, you know, um, using it to, to checkmate votes buying and all that. How many of us remember that season? There was serious cash scarcity. Everybody felt it. Nobody had cash. Though the, both, both the rich and the poor, there was scarcity of cash. We remember. Thank you. Now, do we remember some video skits that went around of people stripping themselves in the banking hall, shouting, Give me my money, give me my money. I, I don't want, I don't, I cannot eat. So my children, this and all that. And people were stripping themselves naked in the banking hall. Do we remember that unfortunate turn of events? Thank you. You remember. Now, who were the people stripping themselves in the banking hall? Was it the rich or was it the poor? Rich or poor that were going to the banking hall, rolling on the ground, saying, "You people will kill me here today. I'm not going to leave this place. I must get. I must get my money." And this one, I did, that one. who was it? The poor. Thank you. See, that is a classic example of the poor. Sadly have not developed resilience because on the journey to create wealth, you must be resilient. You must know how to defer gratification. 
you must have a circle of people that how can we get ourselves some money? The rich did not have money as well. Though. But how were they able to survive? Because, like I said earlier, oh boy, half an hour. Ah, I need cash. Oh, you know, get what do you want to use cash? Do man, the thing get as a be or water no day in my house. Ah, I know get cash, oh, but I get water and I go send person give you water. That's what the rich do because nobody had cash. But by the time they place a call to a place a call, you did that neighborhood. My mom see them say they no see rice. So how far? I will send. I will, we go drop rice. We go drop two modu for them. That's how the poor. That's how the rich were helping themselves. The poor came to strip. So on this journey of of creating wealth, your mind, your mind. The mentality, your exposure to things. It's not just power of network. Or, you know, there's this thing that they say your network is your net worth. Mm -mm. Your network. If I ask you now to check your phone, how many people you have their contacts on your phone? The average person will have probably about a thousand, a thousand five. How many of those a thousand five have you called? Have you built relationship with? Because it is really your relationship that is your net worth, not your network. Because you can have a wide network that you have not built and invested in cultivating relationships. So the journey of wealth is not a straight line. It's not, it's not um, one size fits all. We're all at different places. Nonetheless, start from somewhere. You must have something in your hand, in your bag, in your pocket. You must bring some value to the table. If you are not valuable, Nobody is going to come around you. I am a gold digger. Yes, I say it fully, happily. I'm a gold digger. I want to be around people that have value. The reason why employers do 21 tests before you get a job is because they too are also gold diggers. They want the best possible. If Chevron puts out a job today, everybody in Nigeria will apply because we also want the employer that will pay us the most for the least work. Okay. All right. So I think that I can stop here and allow Colin, you know, jump into this conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. If I know that this is a whole lot of not just nuggets but actionable points and i can tell you that this is loaded and we can go on and on and on talking about this and um for those of us who are currently listening i don't know you must have you must have i don't know if if the fire got to your to your end from this stage because it really did to mine because it it brought to my mind a lot of things that um dr king had once you know spoken about especially when you talked about the association that the people you associate with and the mm. people you spend more time with they help form your mindset and in creating this wealth mindset we are not looking at just any kind of person we are you know pruning down our relationships to quality ones who would actually help us and uh, my my notebook is is full like it's full very full and so we Thanks. just have 
Um, we'll just be taking maybe just a few questions because um, we could go, just like you said, this is not just a one-time conversation. In fact, I would have loved you to keep speaking and speaking because looking at the comment section, it's all loaded <laughs> with all the nuggets. And all. so we want to say a big thank you to you, Vida. Thank you so much for, you know, putting mm -hmm. this up. And I would want to ask a few questions. So uh, one of the questions I would want to ask is this. You know, what, there are misconceptions, especially with women, you know, building wealth as women that they are. Because definitely when we when we have, you know, around money conversations, it's more like a male-dominated conversation. So what are the concept, misconceptions about, you know, wealth management for women that you might have encountered in the course of your work? Okay. It's a great question. Now... There was once a time, you know, I'm going to I'm going to answer the question. I think I'll try and give two analogies. There was once a time, again, back to what we are exposed to. There was once a time when I remember saying this. I Vida Chatabu, I said this. On its own, it is not bad, but you need to understand the mindset where it was coming from. This was many years ago. I said, ah, God, let my husband be richer than me. Or I just don't want, you know, I don't want problem. Or at least if he's richer, you know, you know, at least there'll be no pressure. There's no competition and all that kind of thing. But what I was really saying in context was that I was reducing my capacity to acquire immense wealth in order to help a certain husband manage his ego and the quality of who he was. Imagine that. And I didn't make that statement in isolation. I know myself very well. I must have heard it from one or two supposed intelligent senior female colleagues or bosses who were probably dealing with stuff in their own marital realities and had said it. And because I was around them, it made sense in that context. I don't want any man to be dragging with me or anything. Let him not be feeling proud and feeling like I'm intimidating. Well, that's nonsense. Now, as a standalone, if, if God chooses to bless my husband, and I say if, not because it's not a when, if because I'm not yet married, only that. But in this context, the Lord chooses to bless him and he's, he is wealthier than I am. It should not be because I shortchanged or put a ceiling around myself. No. So that concept that the men ought to earn more. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a woman's lib person no, at all. I, I, the man should please do what the man is meant to do. I, I don't, I'm a real baby girl. All this work I am doing is so that I can live out my baby girlhood. I promise you. Strong, black, and independent is not a compliment. It upsets me when they describe me. Yeah, she's a strong, black, independent. No, no, that's just an excuse for you not to pick up your responsibilities, in my opinion. When you say that nonsense, it is because you, are just, you want to justify why you are stingy and why you are not stepping up and being who you are meant to be in my life. So don't be bringing that strong black and independent. I am not, when you see me, you can't call me Oibo, I am black. So what's strong black independent? Anyways, the other thing I was gonna talk about was, <sighs> look, have you seen where A, maybe a military general, a woman, military general, 
and she's married to a civilian. You can, you know, a military general is already comfortable with her own money. They are living in barracks or in the government house under her name. And, you know, husband wants to do anyhow. Will he try it? Will the in-laws try it? They won't. It is often because ladies take the back seat. And I am all for modesty. Again, all this is within context of the questions asked. Women must be comfortable with wealth. The second analogy I want to give is, I I'm in a platform and one, and we're talking about, you know, managing income. And the man there said that when they started off, his salary was not enough. So what he used to do was he would give his wife, you know, when he earns his money, he will give it to his wife. The wife, you know, will now be the one to manage it and, you know, stretch it. And that's all well and good. But if he had stopped there, I wouldn't have had a case. What struck me was that he said that's what they were doing at the beginning, but later on, you know, now it's not like that. Clearly, he's now wealthier. Clearly, he now earns a lot more money. And he no longer sees the need to give his wife that money to manage. So my point is that his action and his statement, he narrated the story himself, or he wrote it there in the chat, tells me that his wife was good to manage his salary that he knew could not take them from point A to point B. He transferred the pressure of making inadequate resources work. And then when he came into wealth, all of a sudden, that his wife that managed resources and made it work was now no longer qualified to manage plenty money. That's an affront, in my opinion. Again, this is from my interpretation. I might be wrong, but he wrote it himself. And when I asked him playfully, ah, so, so what happened when money, when money became big, you took over, he never answered. That's a misconception. If a woman can manage little and make it stretch and you are able to eat, your children are fed, your rent is paid and all, she has already shown you that she can do more with more money. So we too as ladies must also be willing to say, eh, I can do this. If I'm not getting it right, put your, bring your brain with me. Come and teach me how. Let's just figure it out together. I'm not, I don't want to be the friend in need all the time. They, they run to me when there's problem. They run to me when there's crisis. Oh, because they know Vida is always sure. Vida will keep my secrets. Vida will so rely. Mm -mm. I also want to be the friend when life is good. So I hope these analogies have answered the question. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes. It's more, way more than that, please. Um, Okay, so with respect to apologies for uh, my little dog in the background. So I just want to ask this one question, please. And with respect to that, what advice can you give to what advice can you give to women who may feel you know intimidated? A lot of women actually do not want to talk about money, and they feel that the process of investments and stuff like that it's kind of it's a bit complicated. So at this point, what's, what kind of advice, especially when it has to do with association with other women in the environment, what kind of advice can you give to women who find it difficult to like think about the complications behind wealth management and financial planning? Okay. 
so first things first if you have friends or relationships where you people never talk about money never talk about opportunities never talk about your dreams your aspirations how you plan to move along how you plan to get forward the things that you know you would like desire um that can never be misha i don't know whether to say you have friends because your friends and you what else what are you people talking about what exactly are you people talking about because you can't have a friend that the only thing you are talking about is everything else except how to make progress how to become boss ladies how to control your own empires why are you not talking about that as well it's not only about um i, I i'm trying not to mention specifics because there's more to ladies than a lot of those those things that we are we are associated with but you must have friends that challenge you you hear that they are doing a master's or they are doing something see i you can see that i'm a troublesome person she <laughs> okay not troublesome but i i will i how do i put it i will hold my friends accountable though my friends are doing program they don't tell me about it i'll ask you why you didn't tell me about it even if i know i'm not going to do but you should tell me about it when i find out something i tell my friends about it if i don't like if i feel like why am i finding out everything every time i ask you say oh i thought i told you you know girls do that nonsense Oh, didn't I tell you? I thought I did, though. I thought I did. Just nonsense. It still boils back down to that nonsense poverty mindset. You conveniently leave certain things out of the conversation for from people who are meant to be your tribe. And you want to go far. It, it won't work. Guys, don't do that. Oftentimes, guys will say, Oh, by half an hour, you did this area. Show, show, show. Baba, oh, yeah, control me now. Something, something. That's how guys do. Ah, oh boy, I hear say something, something, something. But no. Ladies will, will conveniently say something, then laugh <laughs> to cover up the wickedness. <laughs> That's nonsense. So if you are with people that are not talking about the next investment, how they want their business to grow, what they are looking at, let it be that at least you are talking about progressive things. Then we can say, ah, that strategy that you are looking at, will it work? Have you tried this other way? Can we consider this? What can you do to help? How can I? I place a demand. You must. Every time you're talking to your friends, it's about what the husband did wrong, how there's no boyfriend, how the children's food has finished, how, how clothes are tight, how we. No, now. So there's nothing again about you beyond husband, children, in law, house. No. And you want to be a boss lady. Do you know what they're discussing there? They're discussing serious things. Oh. Yes, they talk about husband, boyfriend, lack of whatever, and abundance of whatever. Yes, but they keep in touch because they know, ah, eh, I can't do this job, oh, but this, my friend, can do this job. Let me call her. Baby girl, there's this opportunity. If you get it, 10%, 20% is mine. Uh -uh. Isn't that a progressive relationship? Have I answered your question? <laughs>
Yes, 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 you have. Because, yes, of the truth. If when you have associations and people who prompt you to be better, of course, you would actually be better. And people who have, you know, better things to talk about. I was once in a conference, I think um, last week, and I had a roommate who we barely talked about some very minor issues. We were talking about different things, businesses, what we had to do, you know, things that are action points that we were taking away from the conference. And it was refreshing to me. And it helped change my mindset that we women, we have the capacity to actually talk about other things aside from just, you know, children, husband, and uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, and all those stuff. So, although, yes, they are all important, but then when it comes to financial planning and wealth management and wealth creation, we know that there are points where we have to tell ourselves the truth. Some of our girlfriends do not have money. <laughs> <laughs> and, when, and, when we get calls, and when we get calls from those people consistently who don't have money whether yeah. you mean to or not as genuine as your heart is something in you does <clears throat> exactly <laughs> if you don't have money but you can you're, you're seeing concepts with them you see them put putting in the work very true. so yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely we we could go on and on because i i really do want to listen to you and um but um before we take our leave just one more question just uh mm -hmm. a little more please okay. what are the red flags because uh, when it comes to women talking about wealth what are the red flags you know on warning signs that women should be aware when they are seeking financial advice because it's not everybody that can give their financial advice it's not everybody True. that we can take advice from so what are the red flags that we can see just uh within a minute or so so what are the red flags that we can see and uh, be able to where we are seeking for financial advices please okay for me the exit from an investment is as important or even more important to me than the entry. And by this, I mean, the campaign such a beautiful picture for me, marvelous. I always ask, how long do I have to stay in it? How can I get out of it if I don't want to do again? I must know that. Two, if I'm asking questions about an investment and the person I'm asking is doing like my own is too much. Why am I asking all these questions? Is I'm bothering and all. Ah, that's a red flag for me. If I cannot, red flag one, let me back up. If I don't see a firm exit out, that's a red flag. If the living is vague and you know, anytime you want to leave, just call me, let me know. What does that mean? What if you, what if you go to Canada? How does that work? What if, okay, you don't go to Canada, you have preferred to go to Ile Oluji, somewhere in Ondo Abiekiti or wherever. So what will happen? Red flag number two, if your questions are not being answered clearly, uh, check yourself. Um, do not invest in what you, do not on, what you don't understand. It is your money, it's your investment. You should understand it. It's okay that you are interested in something you don't understand. That's fine. Go and learn about that thing. When you have learned it and understood it, then you can invest. But do not put your money in what you don't understand. It means you're going to be depending permanently on somebody's assessment or judgment of it, whether it is good whether they are making progress, whether it is good, uh, it, if it doesn't even tie in with your future or your plans or your lifestyle, what are you doing there? You just want to, because everybody is dropping jargon on um, Bitcoin and crypto, Bitcoin and crypto, I trade in Forex. You are just, everybody is dropping those in investment jargon. Then you now get under pressure in order to sound intelligent like them that, ah, me too, I also have crypto investment and you have no clue what that is about, check it. That's a flag. Okay, I think 
those are the principal red flags for me. There are many. Right, thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you so much. We could, like I said, we could keep listening on and on and on and on. <laughs> and so we we would like to just highlight a few points that I put down. And I know a lot of us already have that in the comment section as uh, Vida was speaking, I was seeing us drop hot comments one after the other. And I will tell you one thing. Let me just wrap up the key points. Focus what you focus on will happen to you. And I can tell you it's very evident. That is one nugget I am so taking out. What you focus on will definitely happen to you. And the people you surround yourself with is critical to your journey of wealth. And just like Dr. King said, he said, your friends determine your value, your value determine your actions, your actions determine your results. If your results are wrong, check your actions. If your actions are not the best, check your values. If your values are not good, check your friends. If you can change your results, then you can change your friends. And so um, another key point is be intentional about your association. We women try to give excuses, you know, let's just leave her. You know, you don't, we don't know what the future holds. But my dear, sometimes the future can be scripted. Success, what I learned, can be scripted. And you can be the author of your own success story. And also, women, get comfortable with money. Get comfortable with money, talking about it, having conversations that surround it, and not just about frivolities. Also, another thing, you must expose yourself to places and people to deal with money blocks. If you're not able to expose yourself, if you're not able to have conversations around it, if you're not able to, you know, be in the midst of people conversing around these things, there is no how you can be able to, you know, grow in that aspect and in that knowledge. Also, there was this nugget she dropped, which is investment is the offspring of savings. Wealth is their descendants. I would want you to put this out on your social media platforms. As I'm dropping this nugget, put them out on your social media platforms and tag her, Vida Echetabu, on Facebook, on Instagram. Do well to do this because a lot of persons will also be learning even from these conversations. Also, there are prizes to pay for wealth because the journey of wealth is very uncomfortable, very, very uncomfortable. But it's a journey that at the end, you would definitely enjoy the fruits thereof. You need capacity to build an investment portfolio. You need capacity to build an investment. And also, the last one. Ah, this one struck my mind so much. And it struck a lot of people that I was seeing in the comment section. It said, poverty of the mind is worse than poverty of the pocket. I can tell you that over and over again because I've had friends, I've had experiences where you lose some things just because they are a means of your livelihood. But because you have a mindset that you can build even from scratch, my dear, you will go ahead and build it. And we want to say a big thank you, Vida Echetabu. It's been an amazing experience in here. And I want, uh, if, if you had caught fire, please put them on in the comment section quickly, quickly, quickly. Put them on in the comment section, whatever. You can listen to this over and over and over again because this is not just any kind of uh message this is a message that is just not just for the now also for the future keep the fire going keep the fire going keep the fire going i want to say a big thank you thank you to vida so we would like to have just a few words before i introduce the queen mother just a few words from you vida before we move to the next session please all right now, um, I don't know if it's a few words or if I'm just going to give a little snippet and then you can do whatever with it you want. When I decided to resign from a very well-paying job, there were worries. People were genuinely concerned because it, people don't just resign. Resign 
to go and you know breathe but i could afford to do that because i knew that i had capacity to fend for myself financially now it's not because i had so much you know superfluous and all because i knew also that i would have to start doing something to earn what it was i wasn't sure but i could afford to make that decision to as i like to say take an early retirement because that was what it is that's what they call it abroad when you when you leave your job after the age of 40 it's considered you know you're retiring early to explore other things and so i did that and when it came to my family because my family um they're quite protective and also quite strong because i knew that maybe there may be a worry that i'll be running back to them to pick up bills and whatever whatever i didn't tell them when i was clear i was going i told them only after i had made i had checked all my dots cleared right i informed them that i will be resigning and they should not please try and call any of my bosses to negotiate and they, nobody should help me i'm clear about it now the reason why i could do that was because i had in addition please in addition and this statement and this comment is with every sense of modesty and very clear that it is but the mercies and the grace of god simple however god made it easy for me to make the choice to walk away from that life to explore a new life and like it was easy for me to take that easier for me to take that decision because i knew that i had capacity to pick up my bills now money is not everything but i assure you the lack of money is a lot it would it can eat your self-confidence especially if like me a good chunk of my identity was tied to my job If you do not have your own money as a lady, start. Start from a 1,000 to a 5,000 consistently. Start. It will give you dignity. It will give you liberty. Liberty has responsibilities as does dignity, but you have a choice. I have lost everything in the course of my career and I have started all over again. I know what it is to have been in debt and I know what it is to pay down the debt as quickly as possible and put one foot in front of myself and keep going. You're a lady, you have that in you. If you can make the best of running a complicated family, in-laws, cousins, brothers, children, husband, all those type of things, if you can make yourself out of that, then you can make money. Whatever you do, it is not to become proud. No. What makes you proud is because you never thought you, you are going to achieve it before. No. And there's no spirit of humility anywhere. Humility is a decision you make per junction. You could have been humble yesterday and proud today. You could have been humble in the morning and proud in the afternoon. So at every turn, humility is a decision you make. So the money that you make that will give you courage, give you guts, you must learn to also keep your ego in check. But you see, 
the humility of a poor man is not trustworthy. Because when you are poor, you're already humble. Nature and circumstance has humbled you. The real humility, test of humility, is when you have money, influence, power, and you are still humble, then we know it's the real deal. So all this one that we're saying, hey, yes, ma, oh, wonderful. Hey, when you have money, we will know, will you still be genuflecting and gracious and humble? Oh, then you start saying, I can't take this. Do you know who I am? We too, we have been there. I, I me too. Hmm. Deal with all that nonsense, oh, but have your money. I'll stop there for now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll stop there for now. All right. Um, yes, let me just stop there. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vida. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can, if I, the comment section, you can actually see you, you have to see a lot of nuggets that you've dropped with us and it's just hot. Please, as to, as you are just dropping the nuggets in the comment section, you can copy, paste on your social media platforms, create a content around it and tag the Ubon King Foundation and Vida Echetabu. Vida Echetabu is in all is on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, so do well to check out, check this, okay. and make your posts quickly, quickly, this night, as the day hot, like we say it. So we want to say a big thank you to you. And yes, we want to say a big thank you to all those that have been with us from the very beginning, even to the end of this Hangout. Just a little announcement. So we have another Hangout. This is the part two. You know, when you have a part one, and have a part two it means there is something bigger something better something that you haven't seen that is coming up even on the 29th which is on friday yes you can see the flyer on the 29th the same time building wealth and a wealthy mindset as women in times of economic uncertainty and we'll be having and hosting Kemi Oyeshala with the anchor, Mary Ogundemo. So do all to keep a date with us, even on Friday, the 29th of March, 2024, by 7 p.m. So just before we leave and just before we hand over the mic to our Queen Mother, I would want to let you know that Ubonking Foundation is on all social media platforms, the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and x or twitter as we can call it and so right in our midst we have an amazing mother we have one who has raised both lions and lionesses in various ways and we want to say a big big welcome to ambassador uyima ivy king if you are excited as i am keep it up in the comment section keep it up in the comment section Clap, give a, a clapping emoji in the comment section because we are so happy, we're so excited to have you in our midst, please. Please do take the stage for the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pauline. Can everybody hear me? Yes, you can Am hear I audible? Me very yes, audible. Yes, you are. Okay, very. okay. Wow, thank you very much, Vida. That was a powerful, powerful session. In fact, everybody should have their notebooks filled up with information because there's no end to learning. Thank you very much for coming on the session tonight. We are the better for it and um, I've taken lots of notes. And um, Pauline, wonderful. Thank you for comparing this, um, this session. It's been really, really amazing. One of the key takeaways for me tonight, which I want all the women on the call to go back and think about because it's been recurring i've noticed it is the importance of building critical networks people who you can help each other leverage on each other's knowledge skills and understandings to get to the very next level and um i want to believe that everybody on the call tonight is living with a mindset that is wealthy not a scarcity mindset so you have to build up yourself 
build up the necessary information that you need. There's so much information out there. I say it all the time. You can get information from mentors. You can get information from books. You can get information from people who know better than you. Because if you're in a circle where you're the smartest, then that circle is too small for you. You need to get into a circle that will ch challenge you to be able to get to the very next level of significance. Thank you very much again, um, Vida, for sharing those nuggets. Some of the information might be a bit uncomfortable for some people, but yes, we need to make you uncomfortable so that you do not stay in comfort zone. You need to be able to push yourself out of comfort zone to be able to achieve the things that you need to achieve to build the wealth that you need to build. And remember, if you do not know there's always information available out there. Pay the price to get the information that you need to get onto the next level. So I want to say thank you to everyone who has come on. Thank you to every member of the Ubon King Foundation. Thank you to everybody who has joined us tonight for this session. And we are not yet done because we want to challenge women in this month that we are celebrating women. We want to challenge you to move out of your comfort zone. So like Pauline announced, we are having another interesting session on the 29th. You cannot afford to miss it. And please make sure that you watch this session again. Take your time, listen to all the things that Vida has said and take some important decisions. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Amen. Thank you so much. The honor is mine. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.